Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the Hot Hustle Podcast with Hype. This is episode 153. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Very special guest in the building. Got a little bit to talk about today. Fellas, reintroduce yourselves to the audience. Who going first? You going first? I'm going first. I to be professional now. Cool. I know exactly. It wasn't not. Yeah, it is me, man. First. It is the uh, home plate overrunner. Stone Cold Stunner. Safe. <laughs> nah, we got to tell you about that one off mic. We got to tell oh you about God. that, man. I'm about to ask, Snoop. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> we talked about that last night off camera. Oh, man. It's Mr. Know It All, man. Your favorite podcaster's favorite podcaster, even if you didn't know to be podcasting, as well as podcasting and multimedia's lovable smart ass. I am here, man. Give me on all platforms, Mr. Underscore Know It All underscore pod. Uh, that's on IG, Facebook fan page, Mr. Know It All Podcast, Mr. Know It All Podcast on TikTok. Send all that fuckery, duckery, and schmuckery over to my Gmail account at Mr. Know It All Pod at gmail.com. Mr. Know It All Pod at gmail.com. Thank you for having me, good brother. You know, as always, on How to Hustle. Let's go. You can both. Meg Nas back in the building. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at some point, you're going to have to cut that because other people take it and running with it. They're not leaving it as a family joke. I tried to tell them, now nah, it's an inside family situation. Oh, it's really nigga. But Nigga, Sam, that shit like you, you call right, your bro. cousin Pookie. Now nah, everybody else can call him Pookie, <laughs> man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, but y'all already know Kid Folk and Skin Folk is your favorite fat freckled man. You know what I'm saying? Your favorite coach, his favorite coach, the big dog himself. Mm-hmm. Nah, we in the building from Life Be Life, and along with my co-host Mimi, the goddess. Shout out to her. And, you know, y'all, like like he said, you can find me on all, uh, all streaming platforms. The visuals are on YouTube. Life Be Life and on IG. Life Be Life and on Facebook. Life Be Life and on TikTok. All, all the things. Look us up. We here. Thanks TikTok, for having me always, again, bro. Uh, TikTok, I definitely always sleep on that one. I, I am hype twenty three. Yeah, I'm just now getting on the TikTok board. Just now, yeah. <laughs> I've been I've out. been on there, but you know, I always forget until I get a notification and somebody likes something I posted. And I'll be doing, oh damn, I did post something on there. Yo, TikTok um, is a wave. Uh, Slouch is a wave. Trust me. Uh, now it's time to send a few strays tones away. Uh, this is supposed to have been mm. all four of the fellas from the podcast link live show linking together to get a little promotional situation done here. Tone didn't uh-huh. report for work, so tone, mm. where, where you at, promoter? Okay, okay where no call, no show. show. What is going on? Right. No call, no, no show. We're putting the demerit by his name, okay? Yeah, <laughs> you're supposed to be podcast tone. Where you Dang. at, bro? You get, a, you, get a, you get a frowny sticker for that tone. What's going on, man? One of them joints with the droopy. <laughs> face and shit. What are we doing, man? What's up? We will be back, though, October the 19th. October 19th, hit the link in any of our bios. The tickets are on sale now for Podcast Link Live Show Hip Hop Edition. Mm. It will be at 6414 Rising Sun Avenue Crush Lounge. Get there early. We will be doing a couple of different panels. If you were at the first show, then you witnessed a magical situation, but that's why we came right back to do it again. Uh, we will be doing these joints frequently, so y'all make sure y'all get with us and get at everybody. Uh, also, check out the lives. We're doing lives every week so that we can get you to build up that anticipation. But the tickets can be purchased right now, whether you're in town, out of town, in the country, out of country. If you just want to show a little love for the situation, we appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the Hot House Podcast. Well, hey. All right. Episode 153. Um, like I always say, if I plagiarize and steal something from you, I will always give you credit for it. So there I am listening to the Mr. Know It All Podcast. Shouts <laughs> out to my girl Ty. was on that week. Kelly was mm-hmm. on that week. Um, mm-hmm. And y'all had Tyrese with the Breakfast Club situation. So That's it made me go and check out a different clip of the joint. And then Tyrese started going in. We will have that clip available on the page at I Am Hype. Uh, what Tyrese is talking about when a miscarriage happens, nobody mm-hmm. checks on the man. When divorce happens, nobody checks on the man. When mm-hmm. it's difficult to put food on the table, nobody checks on the man. So that made me go, hmm. These is definitely real situations that we always kind of get glossed over as the men because we've been kind of fed for years that we don't have feelings, emotions, and thoughts. That mm-hmm. we just, I, I am man, I am going to work and go home, <laughs> everything be fine. Do me um, work. 
<laughs> yeah, me work, me pay bills, everything. Right, um, right. Because right. that was another one of them, you know, uh, happy wife, happy life. Yeah, that's cap. Ooh. Um, so Ooh. what we want to talk about this week, though, is those different situations where we're glossing over the man and how the man is feeling about those things. What is he thinking about those things? Why is it that we're always overlooking each other? Why don't we reach out to each other? Like you see, a miscarriage happens. I can't even, I can't remember ever nobody saying like, damn, cousin, his wife had a miscarriage and I checked in on him. Uh-huh. Like you might've texted him and said, damn, how your girl, how your wife. Right. But yeah. did you ask that man how he was? When right. mm-hmm. nigga might be between jobs at this particular moment. I mm-hmm. mean, everybody got their own situations that they're dealing with, but damn, did you check on bro? How are you doing though? Right. All of those different situations, we never seem to check on each other with those. And that's one of those narratives you want that I want to break. It's just the same thing that mm-hmm. when you can't work together being from Philly podcasting. We can. We did a whole live show. Beautiful situation. Right. This mm-hmm. video will be available too. very soon. Uh mm-hmm. second show happening. But those situations, talk to me about that. Nah, you can start off with you right there. Mm-hmm. Oh man, I definitely feel a way about this and I, I I'm I'm cook up something that I'll probably try to bring we all both back for it. Um for something specific too, I want to do it on something specific. So I'll say that for you know that detail. But um, we call that a tease in the business. Pay talent, baby. Go ahead. You know how we go. go. Flex those go. muscles, baby. Flex those muscles. Uh-huh. Go. You know how I go. <laughs> um, but no, I've definitely been in the seat of one of the. My man cried one time when I called him and asked him after finding out that you know uh, his lady had a miscarriage. I actually called him and asked him how he was feeling because. Granted, at the time, neither one of them were looking for her to get pregnant, but you know, you adults, you fucking, it happens. Right. Um, you know what I mean? You, you, you bear back in it. I mean, the math going math. Um, Folks don't use a condom. They just go raw. Shouts out those kids, <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I mean? So, at, at, the, end, at the end of the day, they end up finding out that he's going to have uh, their second kid. And, you know, she was really excited. So she went and told people he, you know, he he wasn't as excited, let's say. But, right. you know, what I'm saying still, you know, when you found out and you came back, like, oh, you having a second one? Yeah, man, it is what it is. So, you know, I'm going to have we, he joke about how much he'd have less time for this, that and the other. Mm-hmm. She has a miscarriage uh, right before the third trimester. And. You know what I'm saying? Of course, everybody's, you know, outpouring the love to her and people going over the house and dropping off stuff for her. I mean, they village is thorough. Somebody cooked for her and all that. Um, cooked dinner for them so she could just, you know, rest and all that. And I just hit him up and I said, dog, you good? You all right? And, like, he started talking. He got real quiet. And then just, like, you could hear him holding back the tears. And I'm like, nah, bro, do I need to pull up? Like, is is it that bad? And he said, bro, like, I feel bad for her, but it wasn't until you asked me that I realized I feel bad for me. Mm. Like, this whole time, I've only felt bad for her. I've been here for her. I know how much that hurt. I know how much she was hoping that this would be the girl and so forth and so on. So, of course, I ache for her. You know how much I love my wife. But it wasn't until you asked me how I'm dealing with it for me, like, am I cool, that I ever thought about if I had any feelings to process about it. Hmm. And I'm like, yo, that's really how us us men be. We go right into autopilot. When these situations happen, when the divorces happen, when the miscarriages happen, when you know you get laid off, when these things happen, you go right to autopilot because the first thing you're thinking is, I can't allow my loved ones to suffer. You know what I'm saying? So you're not thinking about what you got going on because you're like, I can't allow my loved ones to suffer. But a lot of times that ends up being unhealthy because you suffer on the back end. Right. And so, it catches up. You can't run away from it. Mm-hmm. One thing I don't want nobody that's listening to this to hear, we not. This is not about demeaning the woman uh, in any way. Not, not, it's not, mm-hmm. But you know, you never know what niggas hear when they listen to these joints. So right. uh, sure. we don't want nobody here to say like you don't supposed to check on her. Obviously, she's the one who had the physical baby inside her body. Plus, you said it's three, it's third trimester, which means we already right. down the road. We didn't already bought stuff and all of that. 
Um, exactly. Playing so a baby child that's, about two and all that. That's a totally traumatic situation for her, but it's also a traumatic situation for him too in this situation. And that is exactly what we're talking about. Like, can't just gloss over the fact that like <clears throat> he's tied into that emotionally. I always hate when people say like, as a mom, it's different. How do you know? You're not a, you're not a dad. You have no idea what it's like to be a dad. You have no uh-huh. idea what it's like to carry the burden that I'm carrying. I have no idea what it's like to bear, carry the burden that you're carrying, which is why I'm not demeaning your situation. But people right. will always demean the father in them situations, Easy. which makes Easy. no sense to me. But go yeah. ahead, Keith. You I, think, I, think, I think that we got to kind of come to the conclusion, come to the understanding uh-huh. that um, strength in any situation is a double-edged sword. You know what I'm saying? It's a catch-22 if, if you are considered the point the focal point of strength. If you gotta be, you know, a specific type of way because that is what is is expected of you, I think we kind of give that, put that in the same lane as the responsibilities, some responsibility factors that that we all have, even as parents, women, and men alike. I think the only problem that we have in this situation is that we're not as vocal about it, so we're not being considered. When it comes to things like pain, things like um, the lasting effects of something, things like the what makes us issue. the trauma and what makes us feel away about all this shit that's going on around us. And a lot of times, to be perfectly honest with you, bro, um, it builds resentment because at the end of the day, most men are not given those flowers until they're put in the ground. Like, it, it's all about when, when people look back on you, they look back on you fondly. But it takes one wrong false step for you to be considered uh, inconsiderate, an uh, 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 angry old black man or a pissed off young bull or anything like that. Just being a man in general is, is tough on that end because the only people that understand it are other men. You know what I mean? Women train men to understand them. They train children to understand them. Hell, they even train animals to understand. But well, even in them you know situations I mean? where we, we, the other man, will understand it, Ooh, we cool. still, we still don't even do those things. Where like I understand, like just using us for example, mm-hmm. if me and my wife had a miscarriage, and now I know that you deal with that with your wife two years later, right? Like I know what that's like, and I know what you could be going through in that situation. But it's still a be the situation where we won't still just check in on each other about that, like. We doing it to each other. It's not even just that they're doing it, like that the woman is doing it to you or that the societal situation is doing it to you. We doing it to each other because we like mm-hmm. been programmed that that's the way that it is. And like you're saying, the strength, like <clears throat> some relationships, the woman is the strong one. Right. Like, right. Just because yeah, yeah, just, just the dude is the man don't mean that he's the strong one. Just because you're the oldest don't mean that you're the leader. Like, man, it's I all agree. about those personality traits and those type of things where like everybody don't be built for those positions that people be putting them in. Somebody right. don't be built for that shit. Like you had, uh, I know somebody had like six miscarriages between having the kids, wow. and mm-hmm. that can devastate the whole couple, not mm-hmm. just like her or not just him. Because like mm-hmm. y'all really wanted to have kids. Like you know, people who be trying to have kids for years and they just can't do it, and then you keep having these situations, and that shit is traumatic for both of us. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. People just be acting like, oh no, it just be hard, and that just don't sit well. Like it just don't make sense. So I, I actually seen a post like specifically relating to this, and it pissed me off. So I ain't even bother to comment because I realized I was going to be emotionally compromised in my words. Mm-hmm. But like, I saw somebody reference that exact same thing where a dude was like, "Well, why, you know, if a woman has a miscarriage?" Does nobody ever check on the guy? Um, or even why when a woman goes through pregnancy, does nobody ever check on the guy? And, you know, of course, a bunch of women went with it and a couple of these simp dudes went with it. Um, as far as saying, well, it's not the man whose life is laid on the line in order to try to bring another life into this world. Now, that is true, right? We all know that women, and if we want to be very specific, Black women, on a very high risk just in the pregnancy process to give birth. They could literally die on the table. Mm -hmm. It's a real thing. It needs to be considered and it needs to be respected. 
However, mm-hmm. even with that being the case, if that happens, the man who's with her has to deal with that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, not to be like that, because this is going to sound crazy, so women, give me grace, but if y'all don't, oh well. Um, If she dies on the table, she's it's over for her. There's, there's no more she has to deal with. Unfortunately, her story ends there. Her husband, her man, whoever's with her, who's supposed to be raising this child, he has to figure out how to go on possibly without two people. Yeah. Or the baby makes it, his woman don't, That's and he has to, to go on through that without the rest of his and that child's life. Nah. How did, and so then he got to deal, he gotta never deal with not resenting that child because some people will blame the connection child with the child. Like, you exactly. killed my baby. I mean, you killed or even life. worse, or even worse. Now, when that child finds out that part of the story, whatever he's dealt with in this loss, he again. They're feeling like he got to put it aside because he has to convince this kid that this kid is not a curse. There are kids running around here who learn of the situations that brought them into this world and they end up depressed because right. they take that on themselves. You know what I'm saying? Right, like, right. my mommy's not here because I am. Right. So then he has to deal with that child. I know people don't like to think the kids can get depressed, but they really can. Um, mm-hmm. and, and they really do. So, you know what I'm saying? Especially with a burden that big. So all I'm saying that is to say is that it's that easy and that fast for, like I said, not just women, but for Mm -hmm. people as a whole to disregard men's feelings in these Mm -hmm. types of traumatic and tough situations. I think it's... Let's go with the divorce divorce side of this, too. Can I say say something on that last point, though, real quick, before you go there, though? I think I just think that it's important to kind of um to make it make it a point to kind of garner that attention on that end because remember it, it's the the survivor is always looked at second the remorse is always given to the victim first this is human nature so when we're looking at something we're always going to consider what's going on with that and we'll say oh I can't believe that they passed or this happened or this happened to them. And then secondly, we'll say, oh, I feel so bad for such, such, and such, and such. So ergo, the human emotion takes you through those steps. you got to remember that because it's levels to all of that, the next level is going to be how you're considered throughout, especially if that is not, is not the ultimate cause. If it's like where the woman and the child, where the woman doesn't die. You know what I mean? So she's going to be considered, she's going to be spoken to, she's going to be loved on, nursed throughout that whole process first, as opposed to you guys being, you know, taken in that and as a couple. Our culture, especially our culture, I can't really speak for other cultures, but I can speak for our culture. We are very fickle when it comes to that. We rarely have our, our empathy level, it has is it has ADHD. Our level of empathy has ADHD. It does not, it, it can't just Focus empathy on damn one they don't even exist no more. Yeah, but the whole thing is that I think people try to, but unfortunately, there's a level of newsiness along with it, unless that person actually genuinely cares for you. You know what I mean? Somebody is they be doing it to be partly newsy, partly sympathetic, but not all the way empathetic. That's the reason why I say that it's that it, it has some sort of ADHD because they all over the place with it. They want to do something for it. They want to be in a know, and they want to report the shit back to other people. But they also want to seem like they care. That's just you know what I mean. That, and if you ain't com- if you ain't come in with a genuinely like I'm checking in on you because I care about you. Fuck that! I wanted to be the one that posted on the gram that I just talked to him, or Bro. any that kind of goofy shit. Yeah, um, I hate the divorce side of this situation because I really don't want to just get bogged into the one topic of it, but the divorce mm-hmm. situation. Right. Uh. We got so many people who not in these not in marriages who will tell mm-hmm. you all about how marriages work. Um <laughs> and for you to be with anybody, y'all could have been married for 20 years, could have been married for one year. Mm-hmm. But when you have a divorce, it's a loss for both people. Because you obviously stated that you wanted to be with this person, you've adjusted your entire life to this person or with this person, however mm-hmm. your situation worked out. 
And one of them joints, Dan, Big Dan, shouts out to Big Dan from BTG. He always, he, like he said this on their show, was like, if me and my wife break up, where do I live? Like, <laughs> one is where do I live? Who right. has the kids? Right. What are we doing with the big screen that's in the living room? <laughs> like, yeah. Right, right. What are we doing about the life insurances? What are we doing about all like everything. What are we doing about everything? Because all niggas instantly just go to is like now, now you got it in your head that you're gonna be hitting all these chicks that you wasn't hitting before you got married, and, and then and your wife, your wife is now gonna go. News alert! Married. It's probably not gonna happen that way, neither, fellas. Yeah, exactly. you're, gonna, you're gonna be a fish out of water. You're not gonna know how to talk to them. It's gonna be a totally different situation. It's not gonna be 2004 out there in the streets. Yeah. Uh-huh. Don't even want you as bad when you're single. That's why heads up, fellas. R.I.P. Chris, R.I.P. Chris Cotton, my brother. Chris used to say it was the scent. When you got a girl, you got the scent. They can That's smell it on you. They know you got one. Fair you long, don't, bro. it's a totally different situation. That's very true. Very but like, true. yeah, the, in them situations, it's like you need to be checking in on this motherfucker because this person is a fish out of water. Like they have to readjust to life. Like everything is different now. The emergency contact when you get married, and it'd be like, damn, I gotta stop putting my mom on these joints. But now. I mm-hmm. gotta take her off, cause now you fell at work or something happened. You broke a foot, arm or something, and they calling her. And it's like, what you calling her for? Now, what you calling him for? Like, mm-hmm. it's a huge adjustment to your kids too. Like, your kids gotta adjust to this whole situation. And people always like go instantly to the divorce parties and all of the bullshit and all of the dumb stuff, which is again some shit that somebody who wasn't in your situation has told you is what you're supposed to do here. But like. Uh, Try and readjust your life back to that shit. Like, I, me and my wife been together for far from too fucking long for me to just be like, I'm gonna be over at Nas tomorrow, nigga. This shit gonna be lit. We gonna yes. hit the joint. I won't know what the fuck is like, huh? What you mean? What are we supposed to be doing? Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> no, yeah, no, that's that's real. That's real. Because it, it's, it's, I think a lot of times, man, in situations that, because you don't even have to really be even necessarily going through a divorce. Let's just say you're going through a tough time. Just an entire tough time of your relationship. Because, spoiler alert, in every relationship, in a long term, in a marriage or any relationship, we're going to have a tough time. Exactly. It's going to be a time where we're, things ain't just cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like, like I said before, and so when you start to look at it that way, and it's everybody is that, that was in your circle, or let's just say, and it doesn't even have to be a support system. It could just be... You know what I mean? Because every every circle is not always a support system. You know what I'm saying? There be people around that's there. It's just you know what I mean. You got a bunch Some of fucking just, just moving Some around. Because it's just there. Yeah. They yeah. They just there. there. They always been there. So in the instance of that though, that's where, like you said before or whatnot. Yeah, you're not going to get as much. First and foremost, and most of the time, people don't disclose a whole whole lot. If I if I would say anything, I would say that. Men have men a man's pride a lot of time and his ego will not allow him to disclose specific things that are going on in a separation or a divorce. Women, on the right. other hand, they might keep certain things to themselves, but you best believe that all the best friends and all that should be known. They, it's a whole it's a thing for the best friends. There are homies, you know what I'm saying? People that they know that they talk to on a regular basis, mm-hmm. they're aware of what's going on. You know what I mean? Right. So yeah, it, it's a um it's a thing though, bro. And I honestly, I don't, I don't think that that'll ever be a change because I always look at certain things like this, that the, when, when somebody's feelings is taken into consideration and whatnot, we always look at who we consider downtrodden at first. It, it's just, it's just a thing, man. Certain thing. It's like, um, it's like the, uh, uh, the black people's effect on, on, on the, uh, on the, um, on institutionalized racism or the way that, that that regular racism takes place. The moment that something happens or whatnot, the black plight is always going to be taken seriously first. Why? Right. Even even if it's not all the way considered through and through, even if we get the shaft at the end, they're going to look at it and be like, all right, this is a black man yelling injustice. In the greater scheme of things, when women yell that this is not fair or something is going on, like, I mean, look, just look at the statistics of divorce. Look at the, the statistics of divorce. 70% of marriages end in divorce. 85% of those marriages end because the woman wants them to end. Yep. So when we start looking at it in that way, it's well, always throwing out these high-ass divorce numbers. I don't know this many niggas that got divorced. Like, 
I here, but here's the thing though: how many niggas I do you is married? I do. I ain't gonna lie. That's what I'm saying. Like you, either... I know a lot of people who was married and divorced, right? Before I even had my second kid, bro. I know a lot. Uh-huh. You know what, dog? I went to let me see. I know me somebody see. who was married and divorced before I got married. I've been to I've been to maybe fourteen weddings, and I know for a fact that maybe because they don't you don't go out with a bang, you go out with a whip. And I know well, definitely I more. I definitely sure. know more than half of those marriages are no longer together, whether they legally did it. You know what I'm saying? It, it's it's just one of those things. It's like because sometimes it's funny because like you know. I mean, we've been together, you know what I mean, for 22 years. We've been married for 18, so my thing is that when we didn't, we were that the first ones to get married. A, that nigga's a college senior with his relationship, okay? <laughs> exactly. Okay. So This so nigga's going thing, to the NFL. Did he just tell you he just right. your balls over there? This nigga's going, he's going to the lottery with David Stern and them out there. <laughs> exactly. So I got married at 23, so imagine how many weddings uh, I've been to. Ooh. Imagine how many weddings I've been to. That's why, yeah, 23 is crazy. <laughs> wow. Wow. Is crazy. Right? Yeah, I mean, wild. I'm not too, too far, but still. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's just some wild shit, right? 23, you's a gangster. Yeah, yeah, you gangster. that some crazy shit? So think Pro about it like this. Think about how many weddings that I've been to. I'm talking about a wedding per year, almost per year since. So when we start talking about it and looking at it in that way, now we like, holy shit. How many of them people are still together? And Yo, that, to bring he, back he that point, like that? yeah, like because <laughs> think about it. I, I mean, I know it's, it's true for me now. I just thought about it. I've been to more weddings than anniversaries. Bingo, bingo. I think I probably I've been, been to more wedding. weddings than anniversary mm-hmm. celebration, and not just because mm-hmm. people don't celebrate. Because people very much do celebrate five, ten, all that type of stuff. I haven't been to a bunch of 10 year celebrations, bro. And that's I've been to a lot of weddings. Think about the five years you've been to. Even just, yeah, even just the five. Five, five years. Most of the time you'll be to the five years, but it won't be as many weddings you went to. Then think about the 10 years. Now, I got people because of one 10 year I've been to. I've been to no, two, two, two. I've been to maybe I just don't know that many niggas in relationships. Maybe that's what it is. (laughs) Because I'm like, I mean, I, I think I may have been the one anniversary situation. I know niggas are still together and all, but it's like, God, maybe these niggas just ain't having no celebrations. Maybe they're not just happy. I don't know. <laughs> or maybe, wait, 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 Ooh, that's up. another bar oh, entirely. Yeah, that's that's crazy. But hi, hold up. Are you sure about that? I'm positive because I'm thinking yeah. about a couple of. We had one of them situations where, like you said, like every year somebody else was getting married, right. uh, and only one of them ain't still married. But like. They ain't celebrating only one, anniversaries, though. Only no one of those, those only one of those couples had a like anniversary celebration. And it wasn't me. <laughs> 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 and then you know, another thing is that sometimes I, you know, because I used to think, well, maybe they just don't fuck with me like that. You know what I'm saying? And then I start, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then I started to think, oh shit. You start hearing through the grapevine what happened with this, what happened with that. Oh, why did somebody call? I am mad. I I've been in this game for so long, man, I'm, I'm like LeBron with this shit. I've been around yeah. this for so, so long. So you're not that good? Right? Don't say that about yourself. Come on, bro. Ooh, wow. You, said, you, said, you, you just said, said 20. You just said. You just said. You're not uh-huh. that good at it. That's what you just said. God's fine. How would you do that uh-huh. to yourself? Bro, Y'all can't be together that long. You all time it, points leader. Anyway, look. So anyway, I mean, so damn, look, you didn't work on your left hand or nothing. Nah, 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 don't even worry about it. All time points leader. You know what I'm saying? Regardless of what it said. Means you played Columbus. <laughs> so you're taking back, but you think about it like this. I know people that have been, I was at the first wedding, they got divorced, and I was at the second wedding. Went to the second wedding. Yeah. Second, second wedding, and I went to their five year anniversary for the second one. All right, I ain't, all right see, I, I, you know I, what I'm saying? Like, that's, I ain't been uh, to no second, I ain't been to no second wedding. That type of shit, it. that's what I'm saying. That type of shit going on. I'm, and and that's the whole thing is that, you know what I mean? I want everybody to know what not, yeah, my braids ain't kicked it all the way, you know what I mean? My hairline's still intact, but I'm a whole nigga. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It's cool. It's cool. And I love being that way. But I'm an old, I'm old, I'm an old nigga. I'm getting there, but my knees creaking. But at the end of the day, I honestly really, really think that even just taking it back to the original topic, I think it's important that we I just think that it's important that that as men, we have that camaraderie. 
that like like married men should all, I always believed in that that married men should have that camaraderie where you know what I'm saying they would hang out talk to each other go shoot pool go have a drink you know what I'm saying um shit even even doing business ventures and shit like that together was a good look because it just takes your takes your focus off of exactly what that is and at least you know you have a support system you know what I mean when it comes down to it, just in case anything does something go wrong. What I always say about them situations is it's very easy for you to get advice without giving up your whole situation. Uh, mm-hmm. Just like you said, that most most chicks, not all, uh, will give up their entire situation to the, to the three girlfriends. Mm-hmm. And now all mm-hmm. y'all shit is in the group text. If I come to Nah and say, tell me how you handle this type of situation. What do mm-hmm. you think about this? You go to his wife with the same type of thing. That way you get a perspective on what it is that you're dealing with without saying, let me tell you what this bitch did. Let me tell you what this nigga Like, There's a way to do this without doing that. And like you said, it's perfectly fine and it's great to have motherfuckers to bounce stuff off of. Uh, Because somebody might throw something at you and be like, I didn't even thought about it like that. I didn't look at it that way. I wasn't thinking Mm -hmm. about that. I didn't take that angle. And that is great to have. But everybody sad enough don't have that. Everybody don't uh-huh. have like some niggas is just in your corner because you needed you know somebody to walk you to the ring. <laughs> Ooh, damn, that's a ball. That's a but ball. Uh, mm-hmm. once you turn the fuck around and you look and see how many niggas are actually doing the work when the niggas really once round one is over, how many niggas are doing the work? It's probably where you cut me in that. Where you cut me in that? It's probably, two, it's probably two people. Probably two people. But when you came mm-hmm. down, it's forty of y'all, right? Right. So, right. <laughs> You look up and like, why is Triple H walking Floyd to the ring? <laughs> but when they talk yeah. strategy and Floyd needs his cut and yo, you got, it, Triple H ain't nowhere to be found. Right, why, right, you just right. flick? why are you in the flicks, bro? <laughs> yeah. But you know what? I think those two is, though, we're much more pragmatic than, 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 than as men. Especially as men that have been through certain experiences. I think the reason why Triple H won't be in his corner because he has no fucking idea what he's doing. You know exactly. what I'm saying? So therefore, for optics reasons, he'll be there. And it doesn't mean he means any harm. But at the end of the day, the ones that can help work the situation, the real cut men, the real Roger Mayweathers and Floyd Seniors are going to be there because they actually can, they care and they feel like they can do something about it. So but that's why you don't lean to the single nigga with your marital at problem. All, ever, <laughs> ever, ever, ever. Yeah. And it, it's the thing, we don't talk... And another thing is that one thing that I'm going to say about it is that the majority of the time, married men don't talk shit about other married men's wives. Even if, no. she, is the cra- even if she is the craziest heifer on two wheels, he still don't talk bad about her. You know what I mean? No. On the other hand, <laughs> on the other hand, you could be a thorough nigga. And if she has an issue with you, her girlfriend now has an issue with you. That's because well, she only, she's only going to take her to negative. She's not going to take her the time you sent the roses to the job or the right. time that you surprised her with nothing. She's only going to her with the negative. She's never bringing the positive. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, let's go now to the Get to Know. We know the Get to Know is sponsored by Custom Hustle. That's at Custom Hustle World on Instagram, Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter. We do the custom sneakers, four versions of those, the barber capes, the t-shirts, the sweatsuits, the track suits, the uh, cargo pants, flip flops, you name it, we got it. You know what I'm saying over there at Custom Hustle World. It, before you ask me, yes, you can get that. You just have to pay for it. The crazier <laughs> that you get with your design, <laughs> is the more that your stuff will cost. You can get that color. Yes, we have that color. It's available. But once you start to merge eight things together into one jacket, it now costs more. Mm-hmm. Just, just full disclosure. <laughs> um. When they want the LBGTQIA sweatsuit with the uh with the sneaks to match and the socks. Chill. So my wife told me I was out of pocket. My wife told me I was out of pocket for trying to come up with the pride, uh the custom hustle pride sneaks. Oh, oh that would have been the first thing nah. I did, honestly. Wow, that's business that for real. Is a I was trying way. to tell her what what are we about? June. It's June. They probably be filling these joints. I you must say, them joints gonna drop next summer for uh, for the parade. Next summer for the parade, you might as well get them ready. Get them ready now. All sides. All right, all sides. Gonna go ahead and be like, there you go. I ain't wearing them, but you can. <laughs> and then, on the, then on the side of them and whatnot, you can write custom hustle. Yep, gotta have that sage on it. Get out of there. 
<laughs> Listen, we're all about the business. It's never personal. <laughs> Money's never personal. Nigga asked me if he could get an Eagles logo on the side of his jersey. I told him, you sure can. I don't have to wear this trash ass shirt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right. So um, now we're going to get the hey, yo. <laughs> now, uh, we're going to get oh, the no second. Uh, now, because we're doing the podcast <laughs> link live show, Hip Hop Edition, we're going to try to spin this into a little bit of some hip hop situations. Mm-hmm. Now, we're going to start off with Keith, because, you know, he was you know, saying sign artists and all that back in his day, you know, back in his backslide. Long, days. long, 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 time, long, ago, long time ago. Boom, back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? For I, for, you know what I'm saying? For I, I became sanctified and resolute. When you yeah, hear man. when you hear when you hear what song it instantly makes you go, damn, that's my shit. Um Beast from the East, Lost Boys featuring A plus and cannabis. That song actually changed my entire life. Um, and I'm gonna tell you why. For the first time, I used to think that it was a like when I like even when I got into rap, into hip hop, you know what I'm saying? It was like Niggas is talking, but they're not really talking in, in a way that I felt like that I would talk if I could do it. When I heard cannabis rap on there, for some reason, it was so ridiculous to me. I've never heard anybody paint a picture with words that way that wasn't writing a book or doing a movie. It was it was so completely and utterly, it like, like the stuff he was saying, it wasn't even him trying to stay status quo to some hood shit, it was him saying something that was completely and utterly out of the ordinary. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I existed in the garden of Eden, getting lifted, sticking dick to Eve before she was Adam's mistress, before Christ created Christmas. I've been in lyrical fitness. The cannabis is spit until he spit this. 50 balls of total sickness. You won't forget this. All right, now, get a flag now. See a lot. Dog, dog, dog. Get a flag now. It just starts to, like, for some, like, and it was, I think it was like a hundred bars, bro. When I'm telling you that, listen, I used to, I would sit back and listen to it and thinking about like what was going through his mind. And I realized that he took everything about creativity. He took books, TV shows, uh, 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 the Bible, the, you know, the movies and all of these things and he was not a scared he was not scared to speak about whatever he wanted to speak about and put a clever spin on it. It was ridiculous, bro. Like like so yeah, that that's that's my shit. Always. Nah, what's your joint? All right, I gotta give you more than one because it's that tough. So mm-hmm. first and foremost at the top of the list is what we do. I don't care where I am, I don't care who's around, it comes on, I'm rapping the words out mm-hmm. loud. With, like, I ain't got no sense. Um, the next one would be um, story to tell by Big. I mean, he takes me just like into the zone of the story every time from top to bottom. You know what I'm saying? Arm, leg, like, come on, I'm I'm there the whole time. I've been, yeah. I, I was one of the people trying to find out who the next player was. Okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh no, that just came. Oh no, that came out. It came out recently. That wasn't him. Yeah, what? they they've been they've been knocking out who who it was and who it wasn't the last few years. Well, not who it was, but definitely they've been knocking out who it wasn't the last few years. Um, <sighs> but yeah, those those two are at the top. Those two are at the top. Um, that and also big. My big West beef is also uh big for me, but definitely um. Definitely those two. What we do and story to tell, just oh oh oh. And Bmx's intro from um, it's dark and hell is hot. So I'm gonna take the second big joint off and I'm gonna put that one there. Bmx is dark and hell is hot. I will run through a wall. That is literally my pregame to go sweep, not to go hoop no more. Do nothing to heck to. I gotta go clean the house. I hear that. <sighs> okay, and Shannon. I'm going done. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, no, don't be. I know. Chill out, man. Where's my Michelle? Where's my man, my Michelle? Um, I usually don't jump in on these on the get the nose, but because it's uh, a little preparation for the show, I'm gonna get y'all uh, a big, yeah, you big Papa, you. big Papa, man. As soon as you hear that joint, uh, that shit, nah, folks, know that. It's like that's the shit right there. Big Papa. 
and uh, hit him up. <laughs> so oh. I hear, that's why I fucked your man. Take hit him money. up. Nigga, I will be in a... J- I'm telling you, when the Tupac movie came out, nigga, I was the nigga in the joint, knew all the words. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm like, sit down. Like, why is you this hype? What a side bad boy killers. Like, I got the ad libs and all of that. <laughs> oh, but, man. Um, nah, yeah, nine, nine four shit for that ass, yo. As soon as you hear that joint, uh. <laughs> like, that was that yeah. shit, man. You heard about all the right, lead, right. lead, lead lady of that. Yeah, I mean, what's been, what's been coming out lately about the lead lady of that video, right? No, what you talking about? Oh, uh, never mind. All right, copy that. Uh, now we're gonna get to the last <laughs> segment of the show. This is what do we need to know? Sponsored by H2H Cleaning. That is at H2H Cleaning on Instagram only. We do roof and plumbing, flooring, HVAC, remodeling, carpets, flooring. Uh, you got some trees you need trimmed. You got some grass you need cut. You got a tree you need knocked down. We handling all of that. Uh, like I said, remodeling. If you got, you need a deck extended onto your situation. We got all of that work, all of that love over there at H2H Cleaning. We are here to help. Just tell us how we can help. All right, fellas, what do we need to know? Nutmeg, nah, my man, we going. this is going to be uh, the last episode where we will be throwing out the nutmeg, nah. Those will be live shows only. <laughs> what, oh, do man. I, what do we need to know? Nah? There's too many people deep now. It ain't going nowhere. I say, you, need, you need to know first <laughs> not to call me nutmeg, nah, when you see me in person. Uh, don't do it. I'm going to ignore this shit out, you. <laughs> <laughs> At least you know they you know they locked in if they go there. Oh, I'm, about to say, I'm about to say, you know what I mean? Thank you, thank you for hitting the button. That's how you like to say, but you know what I'm saying? Now they're in the shop right getting some lamb chops. Somebody gonna go, nuts, nice. yeah, I'm gonna keep pushing that cart right by you. I'm gonna hit a spin move. <laughs> I'm throw the cart one way, spin move, go around you, <laughs> push the cart and keep pushing. All right, like, right. Don't, don't do it. <laughs> uh, but no, uh, life be life in, you know what I'm saying? Life be life in is the podcast. Uh, Mimi the Goddess is the co-host. Every other Saturday, we drop our episodes. We just dropped not too long ago, episode 153 with Mr. Know-It-All himself. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's that uh, episode. It's called I, I, Captain. We have a conversation about leadership. And what you also need to know, which is kind of something I'm starting, but not really full-fledged as good as I like it yet, is I'm gaming on Twitch. Um, I'm going to be doing more of it on YouTube, some more live streaming on YouTube so that it's easier for people to access because not everybody in their mom finna go get no Twitch account. But the old head will be playing on uh, Twitch. So if you got kids that like to even watch streaming or if you like to just see what it is that what the fuss be about, you know what I'm saying? Hop on there with me. It will be under the same, uh, it will be a subdivision of the Like Be Life thing YouTube. So you ain't even got to go nowhere new. It's That's just right in there. You can see That's a couple of the clips already there. It's a couple of the clips already there that you can see from uh that I done, uh, put on from Twitch. So uh appreciate it. Appreciate it. All right, brother. What are the mood and the senses that you'd like to throw out for us? What do we need to know? <laughs> oh yeah, well, yeah. Shout out to uh you know what I mean, my man Keith definitely um, uh, you know what I'm saying, go to mood and senses.com. Go ahead, uh pick up all your needs for all your shea butters again. About to get cold outside or whatnot. Got the big good old beard oil, got all the hair oil, everything you need for that. Room fresheners, room sprays, wax candles, everything you need. Please go that pick motherland it up, massage or you ain't never lie. You know what I mean? Go ahead and let me browse that. Um, as far as on the uh the uh uh, uh content side of things, so uh the know it all network has recently expanded um on most Mondays. I say most Mondays because that's when every but most Mondays, and, and it's going to go to every Mondays, I've been doing a live stream. Uh, and the series is called Mr. Know-It-All Knows. And uh, just so happens that the four first episodes are up there on YouTube, and they, they're at 8 o'clock live on Mondays. And I've been doing Mr. Know-It-All Knows Funny. So Mr. Know-It-All Knows Funny is probably going to take on a life of its own. I've been, you know, i got comedians on the deck. I got, I've uh, done ones with Ken Jones. Um Mel Harris, uh, um, Red Snapper, and the most recent one was with Elijah the Barber uh, from South Jersey. So, yeah, get on there, check those out, man. Definitely, that's definitely a good look. Um, Mr. Know It All podcast, as always. Uh, lately, I've been doing them bi weekly. Uh, don't worry about it. I'm going to get back to weekly in a minute because I definitely want to cap out uh, all the way up to episode 200 before the end of the year. Um, I'm 
you know, rounds in a bit on that. I'm at episode one eight eight, which I'll be recording tomorrow. And um, yeah, man, follow yo, the TikTok page goes up. Um, I'm cracking the ceiling on a lot of that. The numbers have been going up. So get what is definitely on the TikTok. Um, it'll be the, most likely the same stuff that you would see on the uh, Instagram page, but I don't know. I just uh, TikTok, you know, that'll be you know one of the first places where you can check it out. So, so yeah, man, it's know it all, know it all network and podcast link live show. You know what I'm saying? As always, this is about the grind both of y'all up. No, no, podcast link live show October 19th. Doors open up at 4:30 at Crush Lounge, 6414 Rising Sun Avenue. It is the hip hop edition. It is going to be myself. It's going to be Nutmeg Nah. It's going to be. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I had to get it all for the last time. Yeah, you know we had to get the I last. Had to give y'all the last one. I ain't gonna do it no more. What now? He had to get his last boogie. Come on, Mark. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna be tone, in the building. You know is, is Tone showing up? You know what I'm saying? Do we need to get oh, him? Oh, don't, 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 don't do that. Don't do it. Don't do it like that. He messed up this time, but he's gonna be in the building. Tony Promoter's gonna be in the building for that. Of course, Hype's gonna sure. be there. Um, Brit, Four man, horsemen of the gonna, live show. Yeah, man. Brett's gonna be there. Danny K is gonna be there. Star's gonna be there. And last but not least, Sunny, Sunny will be there. So listen, tickets $20. Um, we, got, we must give a shout out to the curator of the situation. Uh, yeah, oh, Tanya. But you know, I'll say for this, she's last but not least, because you know, she'll have a fit if we don't shout out. Shout out to Taya. Shout out to Mel, shout too. Shout out to shout, shout out to Mel. Oh, yeah. Shout, shout out, out to Mel, Mel Harris. Definitely. Definitely. It's going to be hosting the show. Uh, hosting a cure. So, yeah. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. Get on. them tickets. Get them tickets. Hit that link in that bio. This is live Everybody show number two for the bio. podcast link. This is the uh, show number two for the podcast link live show. So, make sure y'all get them tickets because we will be doing more shows. We got a watch party we're working on. We got a lot of things we're cooking up over there. This is not mm-hmm. stopping at just these one situation. But y'all, appreciate y'all coming on, fellas. That was episode 153. We mm-hmm. are out. I am Hype. That's H-Y-M-P-E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up.